post, headed down, brilliant save, and it's going to be in for Harry Gay, and it is Ralston Gabriel who scores, and equalises. I can't explain how wonderful the place is at the moment, but football could be different tomorrow, couldn't it? You never know. We've certainly come down to ground with a big bump today. I'm looking at the game today and I feel like I've thrown 11 players together. They don't know anything about each other and made a lot of wrong choices. So I've been with the club for four years and I was studying sports rehab and I'd just graduated and they kind of got me on board for experience and been here ever since. Done my masters, stayed with them, <laughs> still here. There's not a lot of money in non-league football. Um, the club do the best, but like any club, there, there is a budget and there's not much of it. Um, so all our equipment, medical supplies is from Poundland, all our muscle rubs and Vaseline and um, Poundland Tiger Bar. <laughs> let's go, let's go, do it, guys. So my role as first team physio is kind of acute management of injuries, which is what you see pitch side running on. Hopefully there's no serious injuries, but if there is, dealing with it there yeah. and then. You're checking any lumps, anything like that. Four years is a long time to kind of stay with a club, and especially seeing them through promotion and everything like that. Sounds like a cliche, but one big family. So I've had a bit of a sore Achilles for the past few weeks now. So just get a bit of treatment on it, hopefully be back soon. Hopefully I could be back out there again, help them out a bit. When do you think you might be back playing? There is she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, two weeks. That's what you're saying? Two weeks. Two weeks. We'll see how it does in training in probably a couple of weeks. Yeah, come on, and I'll be back. <laughs> and we'll lift that trophy. <laughs> There's no guarantees we're going to win today. There's no guarantees and we've won nothing. We've got to keep our feet on the ground because we have. We've won nothing. There's 18 games to go. And uh, we can't be too overconfident. <laughs> problem was right from the start, they scored in the first minute. We had kick-off, we failed to put it in behind them. They've rebanded it on us. I told you don't get caught in a race from the start. Ball over the top, gets caught in a race, gives a corner away, then poor marking. And yes, we have had enough chances to get back into this game. So there's no excuses, fellas. Do you expect anything different from a team bottom of the league playing a team top of the league? We have given them something to fight for. This tippy-tappy Football's getting you nowhere. We've got beat. You're not, you're not invincible. You're going to get beat at some stage. We've got another 17 games to go. What you mustn't do, your heads mustn't go down and say if what and if what, it happens. Everyone, including myself, maybe we got a little bit too confident and uh, this is a way of bringing you back down to earth. So we take it on the chin and go again. The supporters have been different class. <laughs> I 
Pedro's probably the artistic director in this. I'm probably the ones that um, like to think I'm the lyrical um, gangster. gangster in the, in in this. Lemon, lemon, and Mc <laughs> yeah, lemon and McCartney. Lemon and McCartney. Yeah, yeah, but I started going watching football in the early uh, late seventies, early eighties. One of the things I used to love was because it wasn't seating in them days; it was standing. You had to get to the ground half an hour before to get your favourite spot on the terrace. So for half an hour, literally, all you did was stand in the same spot. You'd watch the players train, um, warm up and you'd sing a song for every player because that was the way of getting around the, the half an hour of boredom. I'm proud to say that I, I think according to the players um, we have actually made a difference haven't we to, to cool. some of our results. <laughs> Favourite song? <laughs> it's got to be uh, Charlie Barker, he's got lovely hair. I quite like Valerie's child that kills me. <laughs> takes to it well so definitely Valerie's charm. Um I like I do like the one they sing for me. Um Rakim Rakim he's the finest footballer I've seen. Kirby's song is pretty decent. The Enfield um cost ten million pounds that's pretty decent. Mark Kirby oh Mark Kirby oh he came from Enfield town he's worth ten million pounds <laughs> No, 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 no. Right now, I'm not really too happy with the fans. Not too happy because I ain't got a song. Like, to be fair, because obviously I was only here on loan. So when I came back and I walked out and I looked up and there's like four or five hundred people in the stands, I'm thinking, what? This ain't the Harringay that I know. Like, it's completely changed. Every week, there's more and more people, more and more people, more and more people. And it's like, raw right, in Tottenham. I don't know, I feel like I deserve a better song. Like last season, last season I was at Ferk and that song they gave you, them fans, if them fans ever watched this, it's unbelievable. That like the song is, he's better than Frank. He's better than Frank. Joel Noble, he's better than Frank. And I thought, that's a tough one to top. I was going to say, you've just now set a challenge for these I fans. know, I know, but that... The Bellin boys need to know about that, that, that song from last season, it was unbelievable. The songs are brilliant, not just mine, all of them. Uh, even when we're playing, it gives you that extra yard, that extra boost, and, and you're, you're doing it for them. You, you, want, you want them to sing your name, so you try that a little bit harder. They put smiles on our faces. Win, lose or draw at the end of the game, they're always there singing your name. Felt quite down after the results. Um, I think the whole of North London suffered this weekend. Um, Arsenal going out to Manchester United, Spurs losing to Crystal Palace, and Harringay Borough losing to uh, Tunbridge Angels in the last minute. Let's make one thing clear. I'm disappointed in losing the game. I'm not disappointed in being knocked off the top, although it's been a fantastic uh, journey and um, being top of the league brings its own pressures. Yeah, fight! Sorry, Lyson! They say for a win! On my headphones, I can hear you look and smile and <laughs> but hold on, now let me just, you know, I need to get a bit serious here, but the word on the street is that he's only got one week. <laughs> Not to live like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not to be nice. Yeah, I've, I've picked up a bit of an injury when I was playing on, on, on Saturday. <laughs> Playing the drum, so, yeah. I don't know if it's to do with the drum. <laughs> it might be my mum's surname. It's the drum. One of my mates uh, brought me down to uh, Borough last season, and we lost, unfortunately. But I was, I was just kind of, I was sold on the Borough. I had this old snare drum, and I just thought, I'm going to bring it down. So that's sort of my role now. You know, I'm, I'm Matt the drummer, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It's cool. I was just at the bar and I saw Vicky come in and we were just having a chat. And she's like, what's the matter? I was like, oh no, sorry, I uh, just hurt my shoulder a bit. And she was like, oh, you should come in. Like, 
come in and I'll, and I'll have a look at it for you. And I was like, no, oh, come on. I thought she'd just been being nice or whatever. And so I kind of felt a bit embarrassed. I was a bit nervous because um, I had to come down on night when they're training. And obviously these are my heroes. And tonight it was weird walking into the dressing room and there's Rally there and John. I went in, I asked Kobe Rowe. I was like, Sorry, Kobe, is, is Vicky here? She's like, oh yeah, she's just in there, mate. Like, it's bizarre. She's kind of given me some exercises to do, giving it a bit of a massage, told me to stop slumping and sitting like a duck. <laughs> she's a very, very kind woman. He's one of our biggest players, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we need to make sure we're keeping him fit. But obviously he does a lot for Harringo, so, you know, a half hour on a Thursday or just come down and check is the least we can do as a club. My mum reckons that uh, it's my drumming at the borough. She's like, Matt, you know, maybe, maybe you don't have to go to every game with the drum. I said, listen, mother, no, I've got a job to do. Start getting your pads on. What a goal this would be, all the way through to the substitute, it scores! These like salvation goals are getting to be a bit of a habit and yeah, it's not good for the nerves. Not good for anybody's nerves, especially at my age. So